All right, so just going to do a quick tutorial today. Um, if you're familiar with uh, gradients in Inkscape, you can uh, you probably already know that they're pretty effective for getting um, getting things like curved metal surfaces uh, represented properly. Um, so just to create a gradient, I mean, you'd create your object, and let's get it to a different different color so it shows. So there's our object. We're going to apply a gradient to it. Choose the second gradient node, knock its opacity up to uh, to full, and then we're just going to uh, hit G for our gradient controls, and we're going to double click along the gradient line to give us our different uh, shadings along the curved surface. So similar to this example here, um, I'm not going to go directly by this, but just looking at that as an example. So we might click our our endpoints, lighten them up a bit, and then each of these points as we go along here, I'm going to have a different different sort of lighting effect to them. So, I mean, you, you quickly create your gradient that way, and that's fine if you're looking directly at the side of, say, a, a metal cylinder, but what if you're looking at, um, at an isometric cylinder? So you can see the top of it, you can see the rounded um, curved bottom, and um, so um, is there you know, a quick way to recreate that gradient taking those into effect? So I'll draw the top here. Just make sure I get it roughly right. Okay, good enough. Um, and then so I drag that down. So Control D to duplicate, drag it down. And if this is going to be the the bottom edge of it, how do I get it to match the gradient here? It's pretty simple. There's a couple ways to do it. I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to show you the way I don't really like first. Uh, I think there's a better way to do it. So you add a gradient, you see that the first gradient you created is already stored in Inkscape, so you select that one, and there we go. Pretty much matches up, I just didn't do the size properly. There we go, so that's pretty good. That works okay, and then we, you know, you take the top, top edge, put a gradient across it, Be a bit lighter on that edge, and so there we go. So we get our our object that way. Um, I don't like this way quite as much. I've been experimenting, found another way. So basically, what I'm going to do is so we create this first, um, this the side of the cylinder first. That's fine. You create the top edge, but that's not actually going to end up being our our top edge. Um, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to draw a square out to the side here and take this top edge, bring it to the front, so I'm going to hit home. And actually what I'm going to do first, I'm going to save myself some work, I'm going to hit control D to duplicate. Um, but I'm going to take this, select the rectangle, so they're both selected, hit control minus, and we get kind of this cutout shape here, as if we're working with stencils. But now I'm going to cut that stencil shape, so I drew a, another rectangle over it, I'm going to cut that stencil shape in half now. So select them both, control minus. Now what I'm going to do is bring this over the cylinder. I want to make sure it's wide enough, so I have to make it a little bit wider. There we go, so it touches those edges. Select them both now. Hit Control minus. And now what we get is, so we have to flip it around, but now what we get is that perfect curved bottom edge, um, but it's all one piece. So if I have to change any bit of it, that's easy enough to do. And then again, to create a top, you're just going to have that ellipse creates the top piece. So again, I like this way better because it just it creates one object instead of 
uh, a couple objects where you've got the body and then the rounded edge. Now it's just one piece that you can just edit directly. And so while we're at it, let's throw in our little shadow here. And there we go. We've created our our cylinder. And I mean, if it's a hollow hollow cylinder, easy enough. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate the top edge. Hold down Control Shift, bring it in a bit. Select both it. Or actually, no, sorry. We're just going to um, just change that right into a a solid flat dark color, and then put on a gradient. And we get our our um, empty cylinder. Likewise, um, I mean, not every cylinder is going to be cut perfectly across in a straight line. Some of them are going to have a bit of a bevel, a bit of an edge going up. So in that case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the top again, make it a little bit smaller, shift it up a bit, and then the the one underneath we're going to put a more more elaborate gradient on that one and then the edges the lip is going to come through a bit better and there we go and so it creates that that appearance of a slope basically okay so I hope this was useful like I said just a quick tutorial and um, I hope people can get something out of that. Okay, um, hit subscribe if you like, and I'll be back again shortly with another tutorial.